WWM here, and I, I have a guide that I've been asked probably every day for this beginner guide, uh, and here it is. So I don't have a lot of time with this video. I got a lot to cover, so we're gonna hit it uh, hard and fast. First thing, this this is the legend for this is the key when you're creating items, not just gems, but uh, armor as well. So each armor goes up in a power. So uh, a, a legendary is to the power of six. Uh, and uh, when I talk about any of the videos and the material that costs and the invaders, this is the key to that. Uh, a simple black is representative of one. So white is four of those. Uh, green is uh, Four to the the second power, which is 16, and then blue is 64. So this is how many it takes of the simple to create each one of these. And the reason why I bring this up and why it's so important is because I get asked the question, which armor should I create? Should I go for, you know, should I go for the rare or wait for the legendary? And I would say, with this chart, you can see that the rare only takes 64 versus the legendary, which you're going to need a you know, 1,024. So if you're not anywhere close to that legendary, go ahead and get that rare. And in cases, go ahead and get that epic armor because it's going to take you four times as long to get that legendary as it did that epic. So take that all into consideration. It doesn't take very much, you know, comparison to get that green or blue armor. Uh, it's, so if you're not close to that or if it's taking you a long time to get to that point where you can get that rare armor, go ahead and grab that. Because you don't want to wait another, you know, uh, 16 times, uh, you know, whatever it would be to get that uh, epic or legendary. Okay. Next point I want to make is when you're starting out, consider joining a, an older kingdom. You can move only if you are level 5 and below. If you hit that level 6, you can no longer move. So you need to make that decision early. Us in 127, we would love to have you. And I know uh, I know a lot of uh, Kong leaders in other kingdoms that would love to have you as well. Contact me uh, if I get enough, and I'll start my own clan, you know, and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll do this together. Uh, obviously, we have a more hierarchy. Things are established in our kingdom. Um, so... That being said, consider moving to another kingdom if you're just starting out. And if you just want to come over and have a good friend, come join me in 127. I'd love to have you. I got plenty of, uh, of resources for everybody. <laughs> Next point I want to make is, if you're starting out, whatever kingdom you're in, get into one of the top clans. I highly suggest getting with the clan that holds the pop. They may not be the most influenced, but they could have the best fighters. What that's going to do is the, that king, that clan, especially if you start early, is going to have uh, the best allies. They're going to have the best do not attacks. They're going to have the best attackers so they can force those rules. So um, if you're just starting out, very important, uh, get in one of the, the top clans. is going to pay off long term. They're going to attract better players, and you're going to get more helps. Uh, when you're when you're building stuff so you can get the helps faster next thing is make sure you establish hyper max system with a bank I cannot stress to you the importance of this when you're starting out anywhere in the game very important to do this um, this game is all based off of resource gathering you don't have to go and zero everybody in your kingdom you can get all the resources you want if you all work together so the next thing is, what what should you build first in your king in your little castle here? And I would say palace. Logically, the increase in the palace increases the amount of helps you can get from your clan. So by increasing your palace, you're going to get more helps. It's going to take off one percent every time you level your palace. So it makes the most sense to get palace 21 
then level everything else for the most part and then build up your your palace uh, above that uh, obviously hyper maxing on this end over here it really the, the question is you know infirmaries versus manners if you're gonna build a big army build the manners they're gonna allow you to build things three to four times faster if you're not planning on building a big army go for the infirmaries with the idea that you can hold your entire army if you were attacked and you can heal all of them uh, so if you're planning on being very aggressive and attacking a lot of peoples go for a lot of manners that's what I've done I don't get attacked very often so I don't really care about the infirmaries you need at least one um, but if you're planning on attacking and being very big build the manners the other nice thing about manners is they create silver T5s take a cr an incredible amount of silver and a lot of the in-game uh, knowledges as well so keep that in mind build manners if you're planning on being very aggressive next thing I want to say is alright so everybody will get a chance out of 499 97 pack 90 percent 97 percent off pack even if you don't spend aren't planning on spending any money in this game that pack is literally worth a hundred dollars to me I have to spend a hundred dollars to get that you only get that pack one time lifetime per account uh, so if you plan on spending any money even if you don't like five dollars um, I've calculated it out if you were patient you could use that five dollars and and if you just focused on going castle 21 you could hit castle 21 with if you got the five the 499 that was the pure gold pack so uh, I would I would suggest at least getting that one pack so the next thing is what type of troops do you want to build and uh, you know there, there's there's tons of questions in this and this really comes back to personal preference and what type of play style you are gonna do if you're not gonna spend a lot of money in this game build up your knowledge you do, and just build t1 troops farm with those t1 troops the t1 sieges man you can get everything you need from those and you're not losing any influence and you're not wasting resources or troops if somebody attacks you you can put up that shield if you want but if you don't have any troops you don't as long as you're moving your resources you don't even have to put up a shield so I would highly suggest to everybody just starting out uh, or even big game late game uh, don't build a huge freestanding army uh, just build t1 so you can farm if you're planning on building a huge army go for the T4s so troops come and go knowledge is gonna stay one nice thing about building these T4s is it increases hugely the amount of offense and defense each one of those troops has. general rule here okay if you're gonna be aggressive build cavalry and melee. If you're going to be more defensive, build range and siege. That's a general rule. Obviously, you want all of the types of troops, but starting out, go for those. If you want to build your influence quickly, for whatever reason, go for melee. Melee, the primary cost for melee is food. Food is the easiest resource to get. If you want to boost your your influence high go for t4s go for cost reduction I went for cost reduction on anything that I mass built so my, when I mass built my range cavalry or melee I went for cost reduction first so the next question I get asked is which knowledge should I go for first guys this is a personal preference of what you plan on doing with this game uh, I think some of the most important ones here that are overlooked are training and uh, economics. Obviously, if you hypermax, 
you only need to go up one of these, which is great. So you can pick one of these. The first three on the top are the easiest to go for. You can hit 10 on those. Um, military is, is another big one. Obviously, if you're planning on attacking um, and being aggressive, go up this military branch, get those T4s. In order to get a T4, in order to unlock it, you need 10 and 10 on offense and defense. The 10 and 10 part is the hardest part. The actual unlocking the T4s doesn't take as long and doesn't take as many resources. Unlocking the 10 and 10 is more important. And unlocking that gives you a total of 131 times your uh, offense and defense for your percentage uh, on each one of those. I think this one gets overlooked. I go up to 10 on these before I mass build um, just because it's if you're planning on mass building and spending a lot of resources way more cost effective to do that invaders all right <clears throat> Vaders is very expensive but if you want that top tier armor you need to hit at least four or five on invader um, in order to do enough damage to kill those um, I, I would hold off on six unless you're really going to spend a lot of money. Uh, the problem with six isn't necessarily getting six. It's these two little things before that. This, you know, troop defense two and troop uh, attack two. 35% boost. Modest is good. But uh, these puppies take a heck of a lot. And then invader six takes a heck of a lot. Uh, unless you're planning on spending money in this game and dumping a lot you're gonna have to spend you know a year uh, in game time to, to complete these uh, so another thing knowledge is more important than troops always man knowledge is more important than troops go for knowledge don't worry about troops uh, knowledge is always gonna be with you your troops are gonna come and go go with knowledge and that goes back to my one of my very first videos. The most important, best armor in this game is your knowledge armor. Build your knowledge armor. Uh, I, I cannot stress to you how important that armor is in order to, you know, complete your knowledge tree way faster. So last thing I want to mention um, that's important, in my opinion, is the the line app or or any sort of uh, chat app. It's uh, it's a tool, just like any other tool. Um, there's some say that it's, it's a poison to the game, and I don't necessarily disagree with that. Just like any tool, it can be used for good or bad. Uh, but if you are planning on coordinating with your clan, if you're planning really coordinating with your kingdom, um, it's very important to have this because you can you can send screenshots to each other. Uh, you can effectively communicate with people outside of your clan um, you can communicate with the entire kingdom so I, I would say download the the line app get people to use it as always thank you all for watching my video uh, I appreciate all the word of mouth that I'm getting uh, th that's really how my channel's growing right now it's just people you know liking my videos and showing them to your their clan mates and I, I, you know a sincere thank you to everybody who does that you know, I, I do this to help everybody, and, and people are, are showing that by, by helping others. Uh, if you have any ideas for videos, let me know. I have some great ones on the way. Uh, we're going we're gonna to narrow down exactly what we need to do for, for our troops. Um, and I, I want to look at just, I got tons of stuff we need to look at. You know, defense versus offense when you're attacking versus when you're defending. Which one plays more of a role? We know that they both play a role in both instances but which one plays more of a role it's a really good question after kingdom versus kingdom and i can leave my clan i'm gonna i'm gonna go over that uh send me your screenshots people uh top 10 for clan versus clan i've already got a lot send me more uh keep sharing these videos with people i i love it um and i love getting uh you know people sending me in-game messages it's great i it, you know i really appreciate it and uh, i do my best you know to, to, to respond to everybody so uh, guys uh, thank you so much for for watching and uh, I'll see you on the other side